All right, um, I was going to talk a little bit about potential energy graphs and getting to the turning points and try to explain why they're presented in this way at this point in the course. Um, potential energy graph is going to look like this, so we're going to look at the potential energy of something as it changes, in this case, across some distance. So here I'm starting on the left-hand side with potential energy close to 6, and then it goes through a quick drop to 2, and you can think of this as, uh, as essentially a hill. So if I were to start a ball on top of a hill, then it should make sense to you that that ball is going to lose potential energy and that the total amount of energy shouldn't change. So if energy is conserved in this case, uh, ignoring friction, that then we'll have the, the difference between where we started and where we ended with potential energy would be converted into kinetic energy, energy of motion. So it, uh, if you think of a ball, then this, this kind of makes sense. You can have this ball that starts at the top of the hill on the left-hand side and progresses and maybe goes over a few humps and then it ends up at a place where it has uh, some potential energy and the remainder of that energy being kinetic energy. The challenge is if, if we come, uh, think of it coming from the other side. So I could start with a ball that only has five joules of energy altogether. So if I come in from the right hand side, so I come in over here and I have five joules of energy, that means I'm starting with four joules of potential energy and one joule of kinetic energy. And I can uh, transition across this graph in this direction until I get to this point. At this point, uh, we'll call this the, the turning point, because at this point, the ball at the current state doesn't have any energy to go further. So the potential energy graph does go further. So if someone gave it a push or were able to uh, add energy into it in some way, that we'd be able then to have it go further up on this potential energy graph. But because it doesn't have any additional potential energy, that uh, it's not going to be able to go further to the left on this position graph, um, but instead we'll start going the opposite direction, we'll start rolling down the hill and end up going back to the right. So this is going to be a change in direction or a turning point as we call it. So the, the, the principle of energy remains, um, but it's kind of a peculiar way to think about these sorts of diagrams. So we're going to have energy that we can, uh, we can depict on a graph that may be greater than the energy that actually exists. And this is trying to get us to, to uh, well, I guess there's a, a purpose that they do this, and, and one of the reasons is to try to get us to think about gravitational potential energy as the interaction between a gravitational field and some other mass. And this is sort of foreshadowing the, what we're going to get into when th we get into electricity. So in electricity, we're going to have an electrical field, and then we're going to have a test charge that we use to, to try to interrogate that field. And that's sort of what we're doing here. So we're saying, well, we, we have this gravitational field that exists, and you can put a test charge in all sorts of different places along here. So I can have a test charge over here, or a test mass, if you like, and, and that test mass would require at least six joules of energy, and, and over here require uh, less joule, fewer four joules of energy. And, and the concept is, is worthwhile trying to get your head around, that I can have different amounts of energy. Uh, this is representing more of the of the gravitational field that exists than it is representing the specific energy that exists in this ball, because my ball can only have five joules of energy. So if I wanted to make a graph that re represented a particular ball, the energy that it had, it would have to be flat here at five joules, so I wouldn't be able to get any further than that. So the concept is reasonable to try to get, uh, and get across here, um, but don't get hung up on turning points. It's important to be able to interpret these graphs. So you want to be able to look at this graph and be able to identify at this point it has zero potential energy. This all must be kinetic energy. As it goes into different places along the graph, you'll be able to figure out how much kinetic energy it has and how much potential energy it has at any point on this graph. That's the key thing. Don't get hung up, hung up on what happens when it crosses or gets close to crossing this line. Uh, the energy of the universe does not change. But uh, we do have gravitational fields, and we'll try to start thinking about those a little bit differently, but really not until we get to electricity. So anyway, I, I hope that helps. So potential energy graphs um, should not be a mystery, and they should not really ever go above the energy that you have. So don't do that. <laughs> hope this helps.